Choip, choip, choip. Choip, choip, choip. Prepare to meet the world's smallest child. He's even smaller than a baby. His name is Charlie Blackmore, youngest in a family of chimney sweeps. And he rocks a flat cap. You guide him on his journey to defeat the Baron, industrialist and child labor advocate. He kidnapped Charlie's family, and Charlie's gonna get him back. No matter his size, no matter the cost. Using any means necessary. For Charlie has a superpower in this world. Incredibly rare and useful. He has no seam. He's seamless. No one can get inside of him. But he can get inside of just about everyone else. And force them to do his bidding. Charlie Blackmore. Matryoshka Meister. First off, this game is visually outstanding. Obviously, visually it's unique because all the characters are nesting dolls. Even the animals. They're designed as glossy, very detailed pictures on shapes. Very little in the way of movement animation. Their faces and most of their bodies are fixed. Yet they are beautiful. And exude far more personality than one might expect. Perhaps it's the way they all go about their routines en masse, creating a feeling of hustle and bustle. Perhaps it's just their wacky dialogue and behavior. Regardless, pretty much everywhere you go in this game feels alive. The landscapes are great too. Sure, there are some parts that aren't as detailed as others, and some parts that definitely feel less alive, less busy. But the sheer size, I mean, look at those high ceilings. It can really inspire awe. At times, cathedralic. It's so impressive that at times you don't even realize that some of the decor is made up of human objects of regular size. Playing cards, matches, tuna cans. They sort of just melt into the background as though they're supposed to be there. Less so here on the Hobo Kingdom DLC, but throughout the game there are many places where it's difficult to tell whether this is a human place occupied by dolls, or just a massive place built by the dolls. Kind of opulently. Although when you slow down and take a look at the gentle flowing waves, you get your answer. A lot of the visual brunt is borne by the lighting. Exquisite rays of light. And some areas that for some reason are absurdly dark. Just like in Double Fine's other game, Costume Quest, that rather conveniently is the review I did before this one. Maybe you'd like to check that out as well. The lights make everything feel lush, glowy, light-hearted, as on the nose as that is. And the darkness genuinely is of a caliber sometimes that you struggle to see what's going on. The music is great too, complex violin and piano music. Jaunty. Over times it tries to inject a bit of Victorian struggle into proceedings. It's beautiful, even if the sheer number of notes at times gives me a headache. The charm extends to the story as well. Charlie sorting out the adults. Most of the game's humor comes from the oddball dolls dialogue, which is quite the tongue twister. And there's a surprising amount of responses, some being different depending on which doll you're occupying when you're speaking to them. Although if you're not going to go out and try and find these pieces of dialogue, you're not going to find much enjoyment on that level. I mean, there are one or two funny moments during the cutscenes, but ultimately, there's much more to read out here. And the gameplay revolves around the brilliant mechanic. I mean, quickly forming a stack itself is fun, and disassembling one is even better. The game's genre is probably best described as a puzzle game. Puzzle adventure. Making it, in my opinion, one of the most visually impressive puzzle games of all time. Usually your main objective is bar to you, and you require an assortment of adults to help you in overcoming this obstacle, pushing the story forward. But these dolls are always preoccupied with other matters, requiring the innocence of a child 
to set them straight and pull them away, and get them to see what's really important. To do this, you have to employ various dolls, as each doll has a unique power. A power that relates to their characterization, some more overtly than others, and these powers are instrumental to solving the puzzles. And you have to figure out what dolls and what powers will yield the solution. Oftentimes in ridiculous and silly ways. Sometimes those are the best ways. For instance, clearing out a party by farting into a vent. Each one of these puzzles has multiple solutions. And figuring each one of them out adds longevity. Most of the solutions are easy to figure out. Especially when you talk to the right doll. They'll inadvertently give you some advice. But some of the solutions are quite specific. On rare occasions even obscure. And thus are difficult to figure out. A bit more head scratchy. These puzzles, however, are not the extent of the content. You can also engage in hijinks, which essentially are rewards in exchange for pulling pranks and doing weird things. Doll-specific trophies for playtime and messing around. And these rewards are spectacular. A golden accessory for the applicable doll. My my, how gauche! Or you could search for all of the unique dolls located in a level. Or try and reunite all of the separated dolls into their respective stacks. To see their story unfold and read their bios. So this game is also a mild, 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 very mild collectathon as well. If you can get into that as well as meandering through this wonderful world, then this game is definitely for you. That's how I played it and it took me 14 hours to complete it and the included DLC, to 100%, which is good by puzzle game standards and decent by adventure game standards. And it is cheap on Steam, 109 Rand full price, 27 Rand 25 on sale. That's 1 Rand 95 per hour of gameplay, which is quite nice. And to download, it isn't terrible. It's not the smallest game, but not the biggest either, as it takes up 1,504 megabytes on the hard drive. Perhaps fairly big when compared to its length, but a decent download. Stereotypically, it's okay for kids, it's obviously cute. Unless you think your child would be scared at the possibility of being sent to a workhouse, or the possibility of being a walking serving tray, serving people gold coins as some sort of hors d'oeuvre. Some people, however, may take exception to the depiction of people without houses in this game, Especially during the DLC, the Lost Hobo Kingdom. The hobo people are a proud people, that sort of thing. It also does work on the warhorse. It does have a slight lag there. And it's noticeable, but I would argue that because it's a puzzle game, having played it myself, it's playable in this state. But just in case you're the specs, you decide for yourself. The game has funny dialogue and story. And visually, it's really cute and gorgeous. And the use of nesting dolls fundamentally makes their character design unique. The gameplay is fun and silly. Most of the solutions aren't that difficult to figure out. But some of them are a bit specific and obscure. Will work your mind out a bit more. Unless you think specificity is a puzzling cheap shot by puzzle games who can't give you a challenge in a straightforward manner. But that's perhaps a bit harsh, no? And it has some great old-timey music. Quite complex. Actually, that violin makes it feel a bit depression-y, even though this game seems to take place before that. But it works, it fits with all the coal and stuff. On the maybe side, if the game doesn't have any vocals, you have to read all of that delightful dialogue. And as touched upon just now, it can be quite easy at times. Not easy enough as to be effortless and thus a con, but easy. On the con side, a great deal of the fun is found by completing multiple solutions, engaging in side activities, and reading easy-to-miss dialogue. And all three of those things are optional. If you are not willing to engage in any of them, your game time will be quite a bit shorter and a lot less fun. And if you don't think you will take this game to 100% or at least close to it, I don't think this game is necessarily for you. Because not engaging in those activities would mean that you probably play it, until you figure out one solution per obstacle. And that usually won't be the most challenging or rewarding one anyway. This is really a game for meanderers. <coughs> meanderers. 
If you don't like to meander, don't take a gander. Other than that, it's a goofy, brilliant delight. I can't recommend it enough. In my opinion, it is one of the most underknown games out there. That noise! Grinding and clicking. Grinding and clicking. Choip, choip, choip. Choip, choip, choip.